Hi, this is Natasha Lair Lewis from Esther's Place in Big Rock, Illinois, and today we're going to be showing you how to make a trumpet flower. These flowers are entirely wet felted and they contain a stem that is felted into the flower during the process. The flower is embellished with all kinds of fun things like sparkles and bamboo, and you can cut the petals at the end or you can leave it just as a trumpet. These make wonderful pins. They also can be hung in an installation style from a branch. You simply make a longer stem and then tie that around a branch. There's all kinds of fun ideas. This is a wonderful project and as you can see, very artful and very tastefully done. So we need a few supplies for this project and then we'll get started. We've got a towel, just a regular kitchen towel, one that you don't mind um, using for some dirty projects like this wet felting. We've got a pair of craft scissors, ones that will cut through fabric well. We have a cup of warm water. This is warm water uh, from the tap and it's not too hot, not too cold, just a nice warm temperature. We've also got a little bit of soap. I'm using Eucalan. This is a particular brand that is a no rinse soap. So it means that we don't have to do a lot of rinsing at the end, which is really nice. But you can use any sort of soap that is gentle. We need something that's going to be soft on our hands, so an olive oil soap or a uh, baby shampoo or something like that would do as well. We're using about a scant teaspoon for a large cupful. So we'll just pour that in and go ahead and mix that into our warm water. So we have our soapy warm water ready to go. We're also going to be using uh, bubble wrap. Resist the urge to pop those bubbles. I know it's really hard, but we need our bubble wrap to um, aid us in the felting process. So we've got two pieces of bubble wrap. The first one is what I call a donut bubble wrap. It's about four inches by four inches. And in the middle, we have a hole cut about the size of a quarter. Now this is going to come in handy as you'll see later. Um, and I use this in a couple different projects. It's a resist. It will aid in some parts of the fiber attaching, but preventing other parts. So we need our donut bubble wrap, and we also need just a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of bubble wrap. Now you'll notice we're using the small bubble wrap, uh, small bubble bubble wrap, that's a mouthful, um, because that actually works best in this wet felting not the large bubbles, the large bubbles can distort the wool and give you holes, so we need the small bubble bubble wrap. So you're gonna put that large piece down on top of your towel, um, and we'll get to that later. For our wool supplies, we will need a piece of merino batting. This is for our flower. This is about the size of my hand, and I like to use the wool batting because I don't have to take and peel it into tiny thin layers it's very easy to use. So as you can see, it's about a half inch thick and about four inches by four inches. So that will be the base of our flower. We'll also need a piece for our stem. This is again, another piece about the size of your hand, um, a little skinnier, it's about two inches by four inches. And again, some of the merino wool batting. We sell all of these fibers at our shop. We actually hand dye them and they come from um, local farms grown right here in America, so it's nice to know the source of your fiber and where it comes from. So that is our stem. Then we'll need just a variety of different colors. You can use your scrap uh, bundles. I always have a bag of scraps that I, I use for occasions like this to help decorate our surface of a flower. And then for the surface, um, the sparkly surface, the fun surface, we have all kinds of interesting embellishment fibers. These are not wool but they will get incorporated in. So we have some bamboo. This is very shiny and shimmery. We have some curlies. These are from the Lincoln sheep. They're actually a breed of sheep that's naturally curly. So it'll look kind of like the stamen in the flower. It sticks out a little bit on the surface. It doesn't felt smooth. So it gives the flower a little bit of texture. And then we've also got some of the Angelina sparkles and those are a little fun addition if you want a sparkly flower. So we're going to get started with our project here. We've got our base wool. We're going to take the edge of the wool and feather it out really thin. And then you're gonna take and fold it inwards. Now we're trying to take 
and make a circle out of this. Don't worry too much about the shape though because we're gonna cut it at the end. So you're gonna take and feather the fibers out on the edge and then take and fold it on under. Fold, pull the fibers out and fold, pull and fold, pull and fold. And the reason that we pull it out is because the fibers are going to stick better if they're more clingy and fuzzy than if they're a blunt edge. So we pull it out so we've got this fuzzy edge that's going to cling to the surface. So now we've just made a circle out of our square, or circle-ish. Not really too particular about the shape right now. So we've got our circle. We're gonna take and start designing some colors onto that circle. So let's start with a little bit of chartreuse. Now when you pull the fibers out, remember to hold your fingers on the very end and pull just a little tiny tuft. It doesn't take a lot of fiber. So we're gonna start in the center of our circle, put your fingers on the edge of the fiber and pull. You get just a little tuft and then we'll rotate it a little bit. Put your fingers on the edge and pull. Put your fingers on the edge and pull. And we'll just come around and add all of our colors in that way. So I'm gonna just do little starbursts of color on here and I'll come and add probably about, you know, four or five colors. If you're working with really young kids, what I suggest is to actually tear the wool into these small pieces, and then they can just take and place them however they like. Working with older kids, they can do the arrangement of the colors and personalize it. So we're gonna take and just continue on in the same fashion, adding some more color to it until you've got it all the, the color in the world that you like. All right, maybe we'll add a little orange in there make a pop and nice fun bright colors it's really cheery these make great gifts mother's day gifts and uh it's just a fun process who wouldn't like to play with soap and water it's just really fun all right so i think i've got about all the colors that i want on there and you can see it's just got a fun arrangement of different shades that are going to blend together. So now we're going to take and add those embellishment fibers. We're going to take a little bit of the bamboo and lay that on there. Then we're going to take a little bit, so we've got our bamboo. We'll take a little bit of our sparkle. Doesn't take a lot of that stuff, just a teeny tiny pinch. And we'll lay that on top. And then we'll take a little curly and we'll put that in the middle. Now the curlies, they're not gonna tear this way. This is actually the lock of wool. This is how long the wool is coming off the sheep. So we can peel off a piece lengthwise, and that's the best option for these little curlies, is to peel rather than try to split it this way. Peel them down into a thinner piece. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that up in half, just kind of put that in the middle. So now this is what we have. We have curlies, sparkles, bamboo, all of our colors. And we have to make sure those non-wool fibers are going to stick on the surface. So we're gonna add a little extra layer of wool. Now this is almost like a cobweb. So we're gonna take a tuft of wool and then we're gonna take and stretch it out so it's nice and fluffy. So we wanna be able to see through it. I always hold it up and make sure I can see through it. And then we're gonna take and lay that on top of all of our design here. We want to trap everything. So this extra cobweb layer is going to trap the non-wool fibers into the wool. So now you can see there's a little extra wool on top, but it's not very much. I can still see all of the beautiful design underneath, but it's going to help secure and to hold it. So now that we've got our flower design, we're going to take and put it onto our bubble wrap. That bubble wrap has a towel underneath it and we'll put it design facing down. The bubbles are facing up, so the bubbles are up, the design is down. You're gonna take your piece of stem and we're going to fluff the top of it out like a mushroom. So now we have a stem at the bottom and a mushroom at the top. We're gonna to then take and invert it and stick it onto the surface. So now that extra bit of green that's touching the pink of my flower that's going to make the stem connect to the wool underneath. So, are we ready for some soap and water? So we're gonna take that water 
and soap that we have in our cup and we're going to just add it to the surface. Then take and mush it with your fingers. Now you can see how flat this has become right here. And we're just gonna do that all the way around. So you want the flower and the stem to get nice and wet. All right, we can shift it around a little bit. You can see how much fluffy wool I have on this side still to get. And we're going to take and mush that till it's all flat and all wet. So there's a little bit of green connecting the stem that's wet, but the rest of the stem is nice and dry. Okay, so we've got some wild fibers that are kind of along the edges here. Just take and push them in a bit, you know, arrange it so it looks nice and tidy, nice circular shape. Just push those fibers in all the way around the edge. All right, so we've got a nice little flower starting to form here. And we're gonna take our donut bubble wrap and we're gonna slide that over the stem. Now again, my bubbles are facing down onto the surface of the wool. The bubble wrap helps to get the wool moving and grooving a little bit faster. So that's why we use the bubble wrap. So go ahead and slide that over. So now you've got a little sandwich with the bubble wrap right over your flower. We're going to start with our fusion process, the agitation, the uh, soap, the water, and the agitation is what fuses the fibers together. So you're gonna take a little extra water now and put that on top of that bubble wrap that you added. And we're just gonna take our hands and smush, 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 smush all the way around the edges. You can turn it a little bit as you go. And we're gonna do this for about five minutes or so to get these fibers to start to tangle together. Now make sure you really work right in here where the stem is attaching to make sure those fibers make good contact with the flower underneath. So it's kind of soapy, it's kind of wet, it's warm. It's a great, fun, interactive process. All right, so we're gonna do this for about five minutes. And then you're going to see that the flower actually has fused to the stem. And to check that, we're gonna just take and pull that stem up. Now, do you see how it actually pulls the whole flower up? That means that we've made a good connection. If it hasn't, go ahead and add more soapy water and work right here, right close to where the stem and the flower meet and work on that. Now there is a point to which the fibers are fused together, maybe not in the desired way, but you can't get what has already turned into felt to fuse. So if it's not fused together at this stage, a little hot glue at the end will fix it right up. But we're hoping that it fused together early in the process because otherwise the fibers will turn into felt but not necessarily connect to one another. Fiber is like a concrete layer when it has turned into felt. Nothing will permeate concrete. So once it's turned into felt, it's going to be that way. You just have to kind of work with it. So the beginning part of the process is really crucial as you're scrubbing and rubbing to get those fibers to connect and to make sure they connect in the right way. All right, should we take a peek and see how our flower is underneath? So all those fibers have fused together and actually made a beautiful array of color. We're gonna check and see how this is doing by pinching the fibers between our fingers and rubbing it back and forth. It should feel like a layer of felt, but it's still a little bit fuzzy. That's about the stage we're at right now. If I take and rub my fingers in between, uh, with the felt in between my fingers, the fibers still feel a little fuzzy. They still feel like multiple layers, but I can pick it up and it functions as a piece of fabric. So we're in between, we're about halfway through our felting process. So we're gonna do the stem. We're gonna get that stem done and then we do one more process of rolling to fuse everything together. So you're gonna take your stem and hold it in your hand and pour the, the water right into the fiber. You might wanna roll your sleeves up for this. All right, now with a loose hand, I'm not squeezing it at all, I'm just taking and rolling the stem like a little caterpillar in my hands. So you're gonna work your way from the top to the bottom, adding more water as needed so the stem is really, really saturated. So work your way from top to bottom, keeping your hands nice and light, and our goal is to change this fiber from very fluffy to a denser consistency. All right, so we're gonna take and roll, 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 
till it starts to really change. Now this has gotten a little soapy. I'm going to just dab up some of the soap here and continue rolling. So make sure you get at the base here, go up the whole top of the stem, and then the very, very tip of it as well. So make sure you get all aspects of your stem as you're working it. It should be pretty dense by the time we're done and it'll hold its shape pretty well. So if you need more water, you can add it at any point, but the stem should feel very saturated. So once you can feel it start to really form a dense um, consistency, then you can put more pressure and we'll finish rolling this stem. So like a small little coil of clay or something, it's the same process that we're doing to make this stem. All right. So we're gonna take our stem now, we're gonna lay it down on the surface of our flower and we're going to start a process of rolls. So we're going to take and roll from the edge that's closest to you, roll this up like a little cinnamon roll, kind of tuck that stem in there. And now we take this roll and roll it up in our towel. We're gonna to do 20 rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then undo. As we undo this, we're going to just check to make sure everything's okay. Now my flower has shifted a little. I'm going to straighten it out. And I'm going to take and turn my whole piece of bubble wrap, a quarter turn to my left. So now I'm going to be rolling from the edge that's closest to me, but I've actually turned my shape. So I'm rolling from a different edge. That makes sure that we shrink it evenly. So whenever you're doing the felting, the shrinkage occurs from the side that you're rolling it from. So if you never turn it, it will shrink one direction and one direction only. So that's why we take and change the directions as we're working. That way it will shrink evenly. On a flower, it might not be that big of a concern, but on something like a square or a rectangle, you might really want to make sure that you do that rotation. So this process is getting the fibers to catch on one another to form a really tight, tight uh, fabric called felt. And this is the felting process, but it's also a little bit of fooling. Now fooling is when the fibers actually really, really catch on one another and form a very dense fabric. And that is after the fibers have held together, the fooling process actually makes it tighter and denser and makes a really durable product. All right, so as I'm rolling, I'm also applying more pressure every time that I roll because my felt is holding together in a more sturdy fashion. And as it holds together better, I can apply more pressure and it will felt faster. So now instead of merely just rolling lightly, I can actually take and knead like I'm kneading bread. So by this point, it's really holding together quite well and I can beat it up as much as I like. All right, so we're gonna take and check what we have after our four rotations, and we should have a beautiful flower. You can take that resist, the donut bubble wrap off, and we have our felted flower. Now there's just a few last steps to make this flower complete, and that is to take and turn it upside down. Now you can see we've attached really, really well, so there's no, no problems here. Everything has attached to the flower. If it hasn't, just gingerly take care of it until the end when it can dry and you can add a little bit of glue. So we're gonna take and pinch right here where the flower and the stem meet, and you're going to take and pull downwards. We're actually kind of stretching these fibers out and making them flute a little bit. It gives your character to your flower. So now it has just a beautiful little shape and we're gonna take it, we can get rid of our bubble wrap, set that aside, and we're gonna roll it on the towel. Just roll it back and forth, back and forth, and then take and do that same stretching process. So roll and stretch, roll and stretch, and this will give it a lot of character. 
So you can do this as much as you like. Basically, we're trying to shape it and to get it tighter and denser. All right. So now we're going to take and cut our petals, if so desired. You can see just the shape by itself is really charming, and a lot of times I'll just leave it like this. But if you do want to cut the petals, I'm going to demonstrate that now as well, so you have that option. So we're going to take and come in about an inch and just make a snip. So we're going to make a snip about an inch or so, and then come over, and we're going to make five petals. One, two, three... four, five. So now we have five petals to our flower and we're going to shape those petals slightly. This is really simple. All you're going to do is just cut corners. One corner off and cut the other corner. So all you do is just snap and snip your way along. And this will help to round them off without doing any specific cutting and shaping. You can cut them into points and all kind of, kinds of elaborate shapes too, um, but this is really simple. So we're gonna take and go ahead and do a little more rolling. Now mine feels a bit dry, so I'm just gonna add a little water to it. And that rolling will help to heal the cut edges that have occurred from the trimming. And it's gonna make it look as though you didn't even cut it, like it was just shaped that way kind of like wool magic. So now that I've cut it and rolled it once more, look at how beautiful those petals are. And I can continue to pull and shape them. This is really key while it's still wet to pull and shape my petals a little bit and play with it because wool is actually very durable and very tough and you can do a lot to it. And this is where the real character of the flower comes in is pulling it out, pulling it out, just doing these small little things to shape it. All right, so there's our beautiful flower. You're just gonna let that dry, and then you can take and pin it onto a shirt. You could take and make it into a really cute uh, hair accessory. You can hang them, um, all kinds of fun things. But isn't that a great project? Something small, something fast, and something beautiful. So enjoy making your own felted flower collection. And again, this is Natasha Lara Lewis from Esther's Place wishing you happy felting.